Welcome to House of Horns, and the draft is over, and the Rams can finally field the 53-man roster after adding 14 players in the draft and 24 more undrafted free agents. So with that, I'm Gilberto Manzano, Sports Illustrated NFL reporter, and as always, joining me, Victor Javier Corona. Victor, I got worried for a second. You might be on the Rams roster because it couldn't field a 53-man <laughs> roster. You could have played linemen, I don't know, defensive linemen, your choice. Yeah. But I think they're okay after adding what 38 total players this past weekend. How yeah, doing? that I'm doing good. It's good to be back. We, we, you know, we've been putting out content everywhere on, you know, all our all everywhere on Compass on the B Network. But um, yeah, it's it's good to be back, Gilbert. It's good to be talking Rams again. And wow, that I mean, trying to keep up with all the names. We what do we got? In 20, <laughs> they got 38 new players. Yeah, 38. And they finally have a backup quarterback. They have kickers now. They have two kickers. They have a long snapper, and they have yeah. a punter. So <laughs> they're they're getting there, Gilbert. So I'm ha I'm happy about that. Yeah, okay. you could you could have been the backup quarterback for Matthew Stafford. Uh, maybe long snapper. We want to have a chill job, a punter as well. But suddenly they have two kickers, uh, Victor. So things are doing well. And also, by the way, I think people here at House of Horns, the listener of yours, are used to kind of you know this surrounding but i'm actually in the process of moving so that's why it's kind of a messy background so i'm gonna put that out there and uh, i think the cats might make an appearance and drop the background which I, the the thing i got last minute from amazon so it might look weird victor but hopefully uh it's okay for you to look at for the next you know 40 minutes is that all right yeah we're under construction as well as we go <laughs> <laughs> you're going yeah. through your background their construction and then the rams are also constructing their roster yeah that, I'm more like the Rams. I, I think you're you're in a different phase, uh, Victor, because I you guys have the nice shows and you know they got. I see the the records there and the and the Compass on the Beat shirt. By the way, uh, check that yeah. out. Compass on the Beat merch .com. Nice plug there. So yeah, everything's under construction this time of year. But the good thing, uh, Victor, is that you know you finally get past free agency, you get past the draft, and you start kind of all those questions that we had throughout the offseason. You start getting answers. And you start looking at the depth chart. Yeah, the depth chart is still going to be uh, a trouble for the Rams, especially defensively. But now you could put, uh, you know, names and faces to some of these positions to play next to Aaron Donald, to uh, to defend, uh, sorry, to protect Matthew Stafford. So when they finally got 38 new players to go, I think it was like 40 something they had. So they still need, they still have more spots for the 90 man roster. But to get to this point, and and so much waiting and and, and questions and smoke screens just to get to this point. I like this time of year because you finally know what you're looking at in terms of a roster and you put aside all the what is, what could have been, stuff like that. But I don't know for you, but I feel fatigued because of the draft. But it's also exciting that we're getting closer to – I know the mandatory mini can nobody cares, or OTAs, but at least you know the roster set, right? Yeah, and now that the draft is behind us, we're, what, in phase two now of the uh, NFL offseason? OTAs uh, are coming. Yeah, OTAs are coming, so – I mean, this is, you know, you're, you know, we're getting started and see, and it, and it goes by really fast. Like before you know it, we're in training camp, we're in preseason and, you know, next thing you know, it's, you know, uh labor day weekend and the season is kicking off. So this stuff goes by really fast, but I, I, I kept thinking, I don't know if you've seen Friday night lights, the movie where, you know, at the end they're like, they're, they're putting in all the, the replacements. And I feel like the Rams didn't have blank spaces for all the replacements on, on the board there. And now you're starting, as you talked about, you're starting to fill those spots. And, you know, I mean, who you know, I, I, and we'll get into it, but at least you, 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 would, ha you would have to think that a lot of these uh, players that the 14 players that got drafted and the 24 that, were signed on uh, the undrafted are going to be able to make this team because they're, they're, they're looking for players. Yeah. I wonder how many were like, you know, at, at the end of the draft or, or, or you're getting towards the final picks and you're, you're probably wondering as a, as an undrafted player, potentially you're like, okay, w where do you want to go? And you're probably looking, okay, LA is nice. You get to work with Sean McVay and also, Oh, there's jobs available. So I think that probably that kind of in a way, maybe it helped them. Maybe that was part of the process of like why they didn't fill these spots because, Hey, maybe some of these guys that you're fighting for in the undrafted phone calls, they come to your way because, you know, there's spots available. And that's kind of like the, the glass half full approach because it is a bad roster. Uh, so you're trying to find ge gems every way you can. Uh, but, Victor, how about we get into this? How about I think yes. there was the, fir the first four draft picks were really intriguing to, for me. 
So I, I would like to have, you know, a discussion. Uh, and then after that, whatever you think kind of just caught your eye from the weekend, and, and let's see where the conversation takes us. But you're cool with starting out with the first pick for the Rams this year? Yeah, let's get it started. I mean, uh, you know, with uh, them drafting uh, Steve Avila second round. What was your? Like, I'll, I'll let you start. Just give me your thoughts on on the draft pick. Uh, I know we've kind of talked. You talked about it a little bit on Cobas on, on the beat, but for those who you know are gonna watch that on Wednesday, you'll have something there. But give me your thoughts on on this draft yeah. pick. Yeah, no, definitely want to go more in depth in here because you know. You know, I think the, the Rams played it the right way. And, and you're always going to hear the front offices say, hey, you know, we got the player we want. The guy was number one on our board. And they're never going to tell you that he was like number four or five, yeah. whatever. But, you know, last thing he said, when day two occurred, Steve Avila was the guy they wanted. And, and I think it broke that way because I think edge rusher was the top priority because you're getting some guys healthy and, and back from offensive line. And, yeah, you shouldn't, you know, overlook the offensive line because it was a disaster last year. And we mentioned that on the on the draft preview here in House of Horns. Like, hey, at least for you know, for me, I feel like and I know you were pushing more for offensive alignment, but for me, it was like, okay, you yeah. gotta get some kind of help for edge rusher because it's just Michael Hoy, and even Michael Hoy is not a guarantee to do it again after a surprising season. So they needed something there, but then it's kind of like, yeah, the season was derailed quickly last year because of offensive linemen. So, you know, they didn't reach because that wave of, of edge, edge rushers went like we predicted. And I think that's that's how the draft the, the board broke for them. And the, the great thing about this pick, uh, it was kind of like a two for one. You know, when you go to happy hour, you get the two for one. They yeah. got pretty much another Coleman and Shelton. Obviously, they're hoping this guy's better than Coleman Shelton. But Coleman Shelton was so clutch last year, he, being able to play guard, left, right guard, and then also play center and then start at center. That's the type of versatility that Steve Avila provides for them. And you know, he's going to compete for a starting guard job this year, which makes it interesting with Coleman Shelton and Logan Bruss, uh, Tremaine Ankrum too as well. But you already have him for the future as the center because we all know you can't trust Brian Allen. He's probably going to walk after this year. So uh, to be versatile and offer that much flexibility uh, from your second round pick uh, and really develop that depth, like suddenly they have depth there, uh, Victor. But for me, what stood out was just that being that versatile playmaker to help out at guard or center, and then he contribute right away. But I am very intrigued how he wins a job at guard between Bruss and uh, Coleman Shelton. Yeah, and one of the things that really stood out from him is that he hasn't allowed a sack in two years. I mean, even going up, I mean, they they got beat down in that game against Georgia. He still didn't allow a sack. So, I mean, the, the he, and as you talked about, he's a versatile guy. One of the things that I always look for in these drafts is, you know, I, I know a lot of people get, uh, you know, uh, there's a there's a lot of uh, what what ends up happening is people get critical of a lot of the GMs because they don't go for need. Instead, they either take the best player available. And I think that's what happened here with last need. They they took the best player available, and the best player available for them was a was an offensive lineman. And as you talked about, the, the run on on edge rushers was gone at that point. So you kind of have to pivot to what your board says. And I thought they made a really a smart choice here. Um, I know there's been a lot of talk about getting, you know, uh, def- uh, secondary help. There's been, you know, as you talked about as well with the edge rushers, but you can't go wrong. Like right now, you're, you know, as you're going through that this gap year, you have to fill in roster spots and you have to get the best players available in the draft. And this was this was the best fit for them in the second round at number 36, Gilbert. Yeah, like maybe they could have been could have been a different kind of player that would have made a bigger impact at a different position. But for them, they need they really needed to address offensive linemen. Uh, and I think I was seeing in some of the I think it was uh yeah the, the beast uh article there like that like he was one of the top cards available regardless. So I think at number thirty six was pretty nice uh, for the Rams like, to get him there. So for Steve Avila uh, to help out there and yeah, kind of a, maybe a nightmare scenario going back to SoFi Stadium at the national national championship game. But like you mentioned, he didn't he didn't allow a sack in that game. So. Uh, he should be okay with the memories at SoFi Stadium. But, yeah, I think they played it perfectly. They didn't panic. Uh, you know, maybe they could have traded back. But then at, after that, like, you're kind of guessing to – you're wondering, will Steve Avila be there? Uh, and I know there was a run on tight ends. There was a run on edge rushers. Uh, there was teams that wanted Will Levis, the, the, who, who won, I think, at 33. So there was other, other teams that wanted something else. So maybe you could have got something if you traded down, like, a little bit. But at that point, you know, stop messing around. You haven't had a top pick in a minute. Uh, 
stay at number 36, which they did. And they got Steve Avila. And, and we'll see what happens. And, and, and I really, I just like the whole plan ahead because they know Brian Allen can't stay healthy. And, and Brian Allen is a good center. But by the, by the way, I, I think I was seeing uh, some of the Ramsby reporters suggest that uh, maybe, you know, Avila just goes right in. Either, either he goes right into center or maybe Coleman Shelton just becomes a center because he could do it and then have Logan Bruss and I will become the guards. And that kind of leaves Brian Allen as the odd man out. Uh, but it's a lot of kind of tinkering to figure it out, but it's a good problem to have after when you, after you lost so many bodies last year. And I think a record 14 different offensive linemen started a game for the Rams a year ago. So this is a good problem to have for right now. Yeah. And one of the things I want to see is if you're going to stick him at, at center, do it right off the bat. Don't wait around. Uh, you don't want to be messing around, especially with, you know, right now that you're going to have Stafford, you know, all through all, all these phases, two, three, and four as you go along. So you, you kind of want to have that, you know, center and quarterback exchange done, uh, you know, right now, mm. you don't want to wait for it later, later on in training camp. So, I, I think that's very important to, to figure out whether it's going to be Coleman Shelton or if it's going to be Steve Avila. And I think that's that's going to be the next big thing for them. Yeah, I, I wonder what would happen to Brian Allen because like he's a well-respected uh, guy in the locker room and, he, and he, he just gets kind of demoted to the bench. It might be kind of a weird you know, dynamic in the locker room, but it's, it's, it's not like he's like a team captain or this stud player that's getting demoted. But I think people – think really highly of Brian Allen and he just can't stay healthy and he probably knows it too and it's on his mind so if they do kind of go that route because you're right you know you want, want like we don't know Matthew Stafford's future with the Rams maybe it's his last year but if he's here for another few more years you want to get that chemistry started so that's a good point by you Victor but uh, I'm ready to move on I kind of wanted to group the next two guys because they're defensive players hopefully that's all right yeah, yeah, let's let's go ahead and talk because I, I I was actually really interested in these two draft picks and especially how uh, Sean McVay and Les Need kind of talked about the 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 day two draft picks and so you know and I'll let you go first here but uh, they drafted by uh, Byron Young and then Kobe Turner which was weird because now they have, there's two Kobe's on the on the team which is going to be oh, really yeah. weird yeah <laughs> there's Kobe Durant and now there's Kobe Turner so. Yeah. Kobe uh, with a K and a Kobe with a C, right? Yes, yeah. So uh, give me your thoughts here. Yeah, the, the first things. thing I thought is uh, they need these guys to start. And one's a second-round pick. Byron Young's a second uh, – no, actually, third-round Two Two third-round uh, third picks. Yes. Byron Young is a third-round pick from Tennessee who's an edge rusher. And by the way, I saw his numbers at, at Tennessee, and you can always go off on of numbers at college. It's a different kind of style. Uh, but he was very productive in getting tackles for loss and sacks. So maybe they, they find a gem there in Byron Young who probably will start now opposite Michael Hoyt. So I don't know how this combination is going to do. Very inexperienced Michael Hoyt and Byron Young, but uh, he could easily start uh, day one there because they don't have anybody else. And then Cobra Turner is, Turner is more of your interior defensive lineman. Uh, and I already seen some of the beat reporters also pencil, pencil in Cobra Turner to start uh, in this uh, maybe for uh, Greg Gaines wrote next to uh, Aaron Donald. So Aaron Donald's going to be like, oh, what's your name, Kobe? Easy to remember. Uh, He's going to have okay. to remember a bunch of names, man. <laughs> Another Kobe, uh, but you're the <laughs> one here up top. So uh, that's the first thing I, I thought, Victor, is like they're going to play right away. But then the other part is like, man, it's a lot of pressure for these guys who are third-round picks to be in, immediate starters. And you, and you see it all the time in the NFL, guys and in, in, in day two make an immediate in, impact. And it's going to be up to up to less need to to see. Well, he made the pick, but we'll see if he made the right ones. Guys were ready to play and go, and go now because that's, that's probably part of it too. You can't really wait on upside. You need guys to play right now. Yeah, and I mean, the, both of these are really intriguing in terms of like the the thing about Kobe Turner was uh, he he was like the second rated uh, defensive player in terms of PFF uh, last year. Um, uh, behind you know uh carter jalen carter so he comes with 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 a lot of numbers there in terms of analytics so i mean you can do what you want with analytics and you know if if you're one of those nerds that likes using the the numbers then he's your guy here i, I know that they got a lot of praise for the for for the kobe turner mm -hmm. draft pick and we'll see I, i'm always i'm always a little cu curious as to how it translates from college to the nfl in terms of the analytics but uh, By byron young looks like he's he's gonna he's kind of a, a tweener he's gonna need to kind of put on some weight and you know he kind of he has that that mold from what i've seen of 
uh, the guy that just left, uh, what was his name? The edge rusher, oh, Leonard Floyd. Yeah, Leonard Floyd. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He, yeah he's kind of has like the same kind of twitch, but uh, which was it's a perfect fit. Like he he should, as you talked about, he should slot right in and replace Leonard Floyd. So uh, I I really I'm I'm really I'm really kind of excited for these two guys just to see what they can do. And of course, we don't know because you know. The other thing that might happen, Gilbert, and we we've talked about this. There's also the free. There's still free agency out there. There's there's players that are going to get cut, you know, on June first, and so you're going to see a slew of one year deals coming up. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to want to. I I know a lot of players try to avoid California just because of the taxes, but at the same time when you know there might be a job for you, you know, with the Rams, you're going to take a one-year deal. Yeah, the tricky part, though, is like uh, like the Rams need to figure out who they really want to be. They want to be the team that's trying to develop these guys uh, and not have them play behind these veterans who won't be here next year. And, and, and But they might help you win now, the veterans, but then you're losing snaps to the young guys, you know, which, like, yeah, By- Byron Young and Kobe Turner could, could take their lumps this year as rookies and, and learn by uh, uh, by fire. And then maybe by next year they're ready to go, but then you kind of stunt that growth and you bring in those guys. But you're right, uh, they they do have roster spots, and maybe they bring maybe they they do need a couple of veterans to help out because it can't just be Aaron Donald and a bunch of kids there. So, uh, but you got to pick the right ones, the ones that really you know kind of help out. Uh, I know uh, Fernando brought him up on uh, Columbus and be like a Kaba and Oil be a perfect guy who's a who's a leader could play multiple positions, veterans like that. So we'll see what, what happens, and I think that's what. I think a lot of times the, the reason why the, the NFL offseason feels so long is a lot of teams wait for the draft to fit those needs and, and address the concerns, and they don't really kind of splurge on free agency. They wait for the draft, and it feels longer. Like, okay, what's – like, Like I think it was funny seeing the Titans. Uh, the Titans were getting screamed that take a wide receiver, take a wide receiver, and they wouldn't do it. And, and when they passed on the wide, the wide receivers, they yeah. kept waving at the camera like, we, we, we hear you. Uh, I know we're trolling you right now, so – People get antsy. They, they they start panicking, but then it all comes together in the draft. So uh, I think, like you mentioned, I mean, the Rams might be feeling good. Like, oh, okay, you get you get the you get the 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 offensive lineman, and then you get two quality players uh, in the round three for the defense. But they are inexperienced, and and you're right on the Leonard Ford comparison. I was thinking about that for Byron Young. The only bad thing about having that slim frame, it takes you longer to set the edge in the run game. You kind of get beat up a bit. You rely more on athleticism, the actual uh, technique, and, and and have movement. So, he might have to learn the hard way with some of these bigger off the off the tackles yeah. in the NFL. Imagine facing Trent Williams in your first yeah. game in the 49ers. Uh, that could be an issue. But I did not, I did not know the numbers on Kobe Turner, so that's a pretty pretty uh high praise to be compared next to Jalen Carter when it comes to the uh, uh, PFF numbers. Yeah, and I mean, like I said, it it's gonna come down to you know we'll, we'll find out more as we get into training camp because. Players will talk, and they're the ones that tell you what's going on, who who is really impressive. And, you know, I can't wait to see what, you know, what the reports are out of camp. And, you know, right now we're going to see a lot of uh, players in shorts and stuff like that. It's, it's once we get into training camp when we kind of find out a lot more about some of these players. But I I, I – I wanted to ask you if you wanted to get oh if you wanted to get right into Stenson Benson. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and do that because I was I was shocked when I heard that name because <laughs> I was listening to I was I was actually working and I was listening to the radio uh to ESPN radio when when the pick came in and they right before beforehand like before the fourth round they started talking about the quarterbacks and they went into the whole Stenson Bennett all his his whole his whole ordeal that happened between him winning the national championship and then the senior bowl, him getting arrested, him declining to go to the senior bowl. And a lot of people thought he wasn't going to go. He was either going to go late in the uh, late in the draft or he was going to go undrafted. So when I heard he went in the fourth round, I was surprised. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on, on the pick. And I, of course the Rams need a backup uh, quarterback. Yeah. You know, it, it was surprising. And, you know, I think there was an ESPN story that came out uh, from Jeremy Fowler where like he talks to a lot of scouts and they kind of predicted where the, the quarterbacks would go. And, and Stetson Bennett was like a six round pick projected or seventh round pick. Some said maybe undrafted because of the issues he ran into, I think, after the national championship. So 
But I always go back to the need at having a backup quarterback. I don't know if the Rams saw starting potential material there with Stetson Bennett. It was more like this guy is older, which is, you know, could be a bad thing, but also a good thing for a backup quarterback. A backup quarterback who's older, who has played in big time uh, college football games, winning back to back national championship games. So maybe the lights are not too big for this guy if you need him in an emergency role. So that's where I'm kind of leaning at. Maybe it was more like, all right, let's really bank on this guy's experience because that's what they need right now. They need somebody to help out Matthew Stafford. They didn't want to look for that uh, in free agency because, you know, they also cost money. Some of these guys, may not as not, they're not expensive, but they do help or hurt your salary, salary cap. So they're kind of doing an affordable way to get a, a backup who was somewhat of a veteran, not really in the NFL, but older and in, in big time games. That's the way I see it. But also, you know, he's a smaller dude. Uh, you know, he, you know, he, he kind of has this, uh, baker mayfield vibe a little bit like he's not really like this pocket quarterback he kind of needs to have things created in the schemes and so maybe they had they were used to the baker thing already so that also helps with being a reliable backup so we'll see but i am not buying any of the starting potential material oh, no. for next year uh, i know some people are saying because he was drafted in the fourth round we'll see but again the whole size thing like this guy is smaller than uh bryce young i think so uh I don't know what's gonna happen, but when he he had the luxury of playing at, at a very dominant Georgia defense, so well you score a couple of, like touchdowns and you win the game. So uh, we'll see how he does, but I think it's more of the experience side for him. And I know I asked you guys on on Compass on the Beat who would be like one of those day three quarterbacks that starts next year, and I think we might we might see Stenson Bennett be just because we don't know if if Stafford's gonna be healthy the whole season, and so. I mean, I I just think that it you needed you needed a quarterback, and I, I was just surprised because there was other guys there, but uh, apparently Sean McVay loves the the fiery quarterbacks, and that you know he I guess as they say you know he has a type, and uh, <laughs> as you know, Stenson Bennett is his kind of his kind of quarterback, so uh, he's a Georgia guy just like yeah. Matthew Stafford, yeah. so there's also that. Um, and we'll see, you know, um, you know, we we've seen we've seen a lot of quarterbacks. I think last year was a record, if I'm not surprised, if I'm not mistaken, for the most quarterbacks to play in a season. I think it was in the in the 60s. I think it was. Oh, wow. um, so, yeah, I mean, with with how fast the game has grown and, you know, the, the players are, are stronger, faster you know, quarterbacks are getting hurt left and right. And so you need a, you need a, a nice quarter, a nice backup quarterback. So at least they have some insurance. I'm sure they'll go and pick up a veteran somewhere. I wouldn't be surprised if Wolford is back or someone like that, mm -hmm. just someone that a, a, a veteran. I, I, I doubt, I hope, <laughs> I say I doubt and I hope that they don't carry three quarterbacks because you don't need that on this team, not when you're going through a gap year. Yeah, no, I, I guess I could I could see like another camp arm. I don't know if it would be one that might surpass Stenson Bennett on the depth chart, but maybe it would be smart because yeah, Matthew Stafford went through a bunch of injuries, and then again, it's kind of the whole factor like, are you really trying to win or not? So maybe yeah. you could afford a couple uh, mistakes from Stenson Bennett starting uh, a couple games if it, if if Stafford is not ready to go. So uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's more on on the backup side, and then Vic, Victor, you've been saying this a lot is uh, the the Brock Purdy effect. Many people. Uh, are just trying to see what's out there and maybe they'll hit on one if, if an emergency happens. Because remember, Brock Purdy wasn't asked to be the starter week one. He just was an emergency backup quarterback who turned out to be a very solid quarterback. So when you get an opportunity, you want to be ready like Brock Purdy. Uh, and then maybe you might stumble on a, on a quality starter. But then again, not everybody has a 49er scheme where you can just plug in whoever you want. So that I think that came that that was a factor in, into why I think eleven quarterbacks were drafted in the top one hundred and fifty picks of the twenty twenty three draft, which is an NFL record. So a lot of teams were trying to you know get that Brock Purdy effect going and, and see what happens. But yeah, maybe they'll get a camp arm. I think last year they brought in uh, was it Luis Avila as their fourth yeah. camp arm. So maybe somebody like that who doesn't threaten the depth chart a little more. But yeah, maybe who knows. But I just feel like the Rams are probably done with John Wolford and uh, Bryce Perkins after how, how poorly it went last year for those two guys because they got their chances and they didn't capitalize. 
Yeah, and you also have, remember now, be, you know, you have the XFL and you have the USFL. There are some quarterbacks out there who you, the guy you just talked about, he's out, he's he's down there in the XFL and the USFL. There, you have other guys out there, so um, you never know. Some of those guys can get a call and 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 get brought into training camp. So that's another way. But I I, I the other thing I kind of wanted to ask you is was there was there somewhat was there another player that kind of stood out from either the you know if you want to talk about the the kickers or the punters or the long snappers or anybody that was drafted late in, in late in uh, late in the draft for the Rams? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll save the kickers for last, but I was staring at this gigantic uh, gigantic laundry list of draft picks fourteen. Uh, and I had to type of type them out for work, and I was just uh, 14 draft picks for the Rams. You're making my life difficult. But yeah, you mentioned they actually drafted a punter in the was it the fifth round? No, seventh round. Mm-hmm. Which I've never heard of this college, by the way, Victor. Have you ever heard of Wingate? E- uh, Ethan Evans went to Wingate. I'd never heard of that. <laughs> no, I have, and I, I've li- I there, there's always. I feel like every year. I don't know if it happens to you, Gilbert, especially now that you're cover, you're 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 covering the the national. Uh, you know, the whole scope of the NFL now, but there's always, I feel like there's always a college that I've never heard of where a guy gets drafted out of. And I'm like, wait, where, like, I'm just, I'm just like, I, I didn't even know that that school existed, but Hey, good for Ethan Evans. Uh, you know, he, <laughs> he, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be hit, hitting up, especially if he makes the team. I can tell you this, there'll, there'll be people hitting up Wingate and trying to figure out, you know, get a story uh, uh, about where he came from and the school he came from. Yeah, and another thing that stood out to me, uh, a couple things. Uh, the the name of the draft was Bumper Pool. That was a, a good one for me that I heard. And then another school I'd never heard of was Incarnate World. So some of oh. these colleges came out of nowhere. And then also speaking of the Brock Purdy effect, the Rams actually got Mr. Relevant this year, uh, number 259, seventh round. This, 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 I want to say Juan. This, is it this Juan or this John? Uh, Johnson. This John, this John Johnson. <laughs> Watch, it's gonna be. We're gonna want to call him this Juan, and it's gonna be the John Johnson. <laughs> this Juan Johnson, defensive end Toledo. He was the seventh one, but the one that I really like was, you know, when I'm doing my work for for SI, and I kind of sometimes listen to the broadcast, and Daniel Jeremiah kept harping on. Uh, uh, Puka Nakua, wide receiver at BYU, round five, number 177. Uh, he really liked them. He's like, oh, the Rams took Puka. And he's like, I like him. He's one of the one of my sleepers. So uh, maybe he could be this year's Lance McCutcheon there, wide receiver. Uh, and then you never know. Maybe a guy like uh, Warren McClendon, offensive tackle, does something because the Rams run through offensive tackles there too. And uh, But, yeah, Puka, for some reason, really caught uh, the, the attention of uh, Dan Jeremiah from NFL Network. Yeah, and I was I was gonna mention. I'm glad you didn't. I I didn't know if you were gonna talk about it, but is it Travis uh, Hodges Tomlinson? Who's the? Yeah. Is he the nephew of of uh, uh, Ladanian Tomlinson? Yeah. You know, and then uh, another TCU guy. I feel like between the Rams and the Chargers, I think they ended up with like six uh, ha- uh, Horn Frog players. But uh, one of the things about him, I I know I know even. Uh, 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 Ramsey, Jalen Ramsey was uh, kind of yeah. tweeted at him, shout and out. yeah, he gave him a shout out. And I, I thought like one of the things I saw from him, I know I, I you know, a couple of the websites uh, that I that I saw talk about him is that if he he's five eight, I think if he was like five ten, five eleven, and he was like uh, uh about ten pounds heavier, he probably would have been like a third or a second round pick, but. And you know you never want to give up on guys like those uh, like that because you know if you can play them in the slot they can they can do great so you never know so he's somebody that I'm going to keep an eye on throughout training camp and then into the preseason because he might be someone that makes the team just because of where the ra- how how much uh, secondary help is needed for the Rams. Well, look at how it worked out so well last year with Kobe Durant, a smaller cornerback uh, who played outside his collegiate career. I think it was South Carolina State, and he's a smaller dude. Like, hey, you know, Kobe, can you can you try a slot? And you know, he he does well right away. He's a, he's a playmaker in the slot, and now he might be out. He played so well, now he's like, okay, let's take a chance on the outside because they need it. And now you could plug in uh, the nephew of LT there. Uh, I should probably remember his first name, but it's uh, Hodges Tomlinson. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, where we'll find out. Yeah, we got to remember. 
you, yeah. you'll get the roster where you could pronounce the names eventually. Uh, so that will help us out. But yeah, maybe he does that Kobe Durant de development plan where he goes into the slot, slot becomes a, a, a ball skill playmaker and, and just take the Kobe Durant blueprint. So I think after it worked out so well last year, maybe they, they take a stab at it. But yeah, you're right. I think he might be one of the ones that might uh, maybe get that nickel spot and, and contribute right away. Uh, but, you know, with such a bad roster, some of these guys are going to you're going to hear their names pretty often. Maybe we're missing on a couple there. Uh, but like uh, the wide receiver, just mentioned from BYU, uh, you know, Tomlinson from TCU. Obviously, the punter will probably play a lot because they need a they need a starting punter there. So all these guys here, man, maybe I should remember all 14 names because uh, we'll probably hear more of them throughout the season. And and I know you're going to get into the kickers, but I just I was I was kind of surprised. And when I know the I know the 49ers drafted a a uh, a kicker in the fourth round, or is it the third or fourth round? And Moody from third, uh, third round. Michigan, third round. Yeah. And so then you started seeing like I think two other kickers got drafted. Like I I, I was like I wonder if the Rams are going to take a chance on a on a kicker, but they didn't. They just picked two two. They picked up two of them in uh in uh in the might be uh undrafted but yeah like i i when i saw the punter i was kind of surprised they went punter instead of uh instead of a kicker but i that that'll yeah. show yeah ethan evans is probably gonna make the team yeah they probably thought uh you know you know they could get an undrafted one they like because there was two they got on here that i'll mention right now but the one that you know it maybe this is you gotta say it for the 49ers show but a team that has so many like you know Big time goals and Super Bowl aspirations to be relying on a rookie kicker for big time games to win. It's uh, a little dicey there. I know they got Zane Gonzalez on that roster, but I was scratching my head at that one. And, and he, he, you know, he is by far considered the best kicker prospect. But we've seen it too many times back there in this league. When you lose confidence as a young kicker, uh, it's hard to get back. So it's putting a lot of pressure on the kid. But they do have another kicker on the roster, and the Rams will have two kickers on the rosters too. Uh, but eventually uh, they'll get to one undrafted guy. And one of them is uh, Christopher Dunn, North Carolina State. And the other one is uh, what, where, oh, Tanner, Tanner Brown, Brown, Oklahoma State. When I don't know much about these guys, but I think Christopher Dunn's a more decorated one. We'll yeah, see that's the one win. I heard a lot about. I, I heard a lot, a lot of people pointing out that he's probably the one that's going to make the team. But we'll see. Yeah, so that's kind of the similar thing with the 49ers, an undrafted kicker starting games for you. We'll see if that happens, but the Rams are not thinking about the Super Bowl. They're thinking about just uh, building some blocks there for the future, and maybe uh, this guy, Christopher Dunn, or or uh, Tanner Brown, don't want to cut him out just yet, uh, become reliable kicker. And this is a, that's kind of the good thing about this kind of feel-out year is that you, you, you could form mistakes. You could kind of, you know, learn on the fly and see where it goes. So, uh yeah, and I think there's a long snapper in this crew here. Where is it? Oh, Alex Ward, Central Florida. He might start. I don't know. But I, I covering a couple of training camps before, you always see like an undrafted guy uh, get a crack at long snapper and let being the long snapper, and they don't do well in camp. I'm like, All right, kid, you're out of here. And they bring in the veteran who's played like 40 years, and he's like yeah. 52 with eight kids. So uh, don't be surprised to bring another veteran to play long snapper. A guy you don't, you don't know his name, but if you check his bio, he's been in the league for the last 20 years. The only time you hear about them is when they get hurt and you need, you know, you, there's no backup. So, you know, you're just pretty much, hey, who knows how to snap? And, you know, and then you're looking for the next guy, you know, somewhere out there. So those guys are very, very valuable uh, until you need them. And, you know, you don't hear about them as you talked about. Um, but, yeah, they're, I I hope they get it right with this guy because, you know, like you said, you can always find one. There's there's a couple out there on the street that, you know, they, they, they're they they're hard. They're, you know, the good ones are hard to find, but you can find one that's serviceable. And, you know, um, I'm sure they'll go that way if he, if he doesn't work out. Yeah, well, there you have it, uh, 38 uh, new faces to the Rams. And, Victor, before we go – I want to ask you one question that wasn't part of the rundown. I'm going to yeah. ask it on the fly. The schedule is supposed to come out next week. I want to say May 11th. Who do you want to see the Rams open the season in week one, uh, either at SoFi or on the road? If, if I'm being honest here, like, I wouldn't want them to face anybody that's really good. Like, I would want to see, like, as a just a, a, a national person, like, that likes a good matchup. I hope that the Rams don't get like the Niners or the, or the Seahawks, mm. I would rather them play someone like the Cardinals. Cardinals. Just, just, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Hey, it's who, who's going to the, the two teams that might be, you know, going for a top five pick in the draft, you know, 
but yeah, I I I don't think we're gonna see any. There won't be. I don't. Do you actually? I'll flip it on you now. Do you think the rent? How many? How many uh, prime time games do the Rams get? Oh, that's actually a good question. Well, they they're gonna get a Thursday night because everybody gets a Thursday night, right? That's one. Uh, you know what? I'll say three, just because they love the camera on Sean McVay and you still got Cup, Donald, and Stafford. So I'll go with three, one for sure. Uh, Thursday night, and I'll say one Sunday night and one Monday night. So that might be that might, that might be one too many, but I think three just because there's still a lot of LA star power hanging around. And I think the interesting thing that's gonna the, what would be interesting is which matchup because like the thing with the Rams is I think it's probably going to be a Niner a, a 49ers and Rams game that's the prime time game but and I don't think it's going to be a Thursday night game I think it'll be a Monday night game mm-hmm. I think they get two I think the 49ers and Rams is going to be on a Monday night and I think Seahawks and Rams is going to be on a Thursday night yeah, how about they start the week one, maybe like a Monday Night Football, the second of the doubleheader. I don't know if they still do that, but uh, Bobby Wagner in the Seahawks against the Rams. How about a reverse revenge game there again, running back? And, and I, I'm actually, I, I was actually going to bring this up on Compass for, for next week since we're going to probably do something on the schedule, but there's three doubleheaders for Monday night. Oh, like throughout yeah. the season? Yeah, so I was looking at some mock uh, schedules and there's three Monday night double headers in the season, which I did not know. So hmm. that yeah, was something to learn. They did kind of experiment with that last year. There was a couple Monday night games that were double headers. I remember. Yeah, uh, there was uh there was that uh Philly and and Vikings game. Oh and yeah, and it was followed oh. by another game. So they're gonna have three this year. Yeah, and it's okay. gonna. I think it's the first three weeks. Yeah, and you usually need to have one the late one be one of the West Coast teams. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if the Rams get on that schedule there. But, yeah, uh, there you go. We're thinking ahead, and uh, it's uh, that time of year where you're looking at the schedule and you start counting the wins. The ones that are kind of very optimistic say win, win, win all the time, and the ones that are very negative say LLL. Uh, but we try to stay in the middle here at House of Horns. Uh, but definitely check out all our work and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content here. We just broke down the draft, even undrafted. Uh, free agent conversation here, so we do it all here at House of Horns. And yeah, it is the off season; it's a little slow. Uh, but whenever there's some newsy stuff, we'll be on here, uh, chopping it up and talking around. So uh, if you like this video, give it a like or just comment. Let it know what you thought. Uh, you could tell me that I was terrible for for saying uh, Stetson Bennett will never be a starting quarterback in the league or whatever you want to do. So just comment. We love to hear the engagement here at House of Horns. Before we go, what did what grade did you give the the Rams on on uh, we you, you I don't think you yeah. mentioned it. Yeah, yeah, actually, I, I actually liked it, so I gave it a B at uh, Sports Illustrated. I thought it was a you know a very productive draft. Like they would have landed like a, a, a like a big time edge rusher, one of the guys that maybe fell out of the first round, and, and they they got a, a edge rusher. I would have gave it an A, but it's it's, it's not like uh you know the, the sexiest draft. But it's one they're gonna look back on maybe in a couple of years, like oh that's Steve Avila kid, yeah he he, he has an, a, a mean streak on the field. He's, he's very durable, flexible, and then you have maybe you maybe you hit on Byron Young or Kobe Turner. It's a big ask, but uh, at least you see potential and upside. But it's gonna be an uphill battle for these guys. So a B just because I wish they would have got more with an edge rusher there uh, early. But maybe Byron Young proves me wrong, and it becomes a gra- a, a, a a draft grade in a couple of years. What about for yeah. you? Yeah, no, I was going to say B, just because they got a lot of, of value picks, like uh, overvalued, like, uh, you know, a lot of these picks were, you know, where they, they took them in the fifth, sixth, and seventh round. They had higher uh, where they were supposed to go, like in the fourth or the fifth round. So just for that, just being able to do, and then, you know, hey, you have more chances at it. You have 14 picks. Some of these are going to, some of these are going to hit, and so... That's that's all you hope for that you get more chances at it. But uh, before we go, I just want to say that I, I I'm pretty sure saying this that our next episode is going to be our schedule breakdown, which is uh, according to rumors is that the schedule is going to drop May 11th. So we'll yeah. try to have a show for you guys right after that. Um, outside of that, that's all I have for for you, uh, Gilbert. Yeah, uh, we'll do one for the schedule. Maybe we'll hang around a couple times during. OTAs or manager minicamp and then eventually take a break until the real deal of the season comes through. But yeah, uh, definitely check out all the work. Uh, Compass on the beat.com for all our content there. 
you want a, a cool hoodie that's uh, Comes on the Beat or that shirt behind uh, Victor Comes on the Beat t-shirt, check out Comes on the Beat merch.com. Link in the description below. So check it all out. If you help, if you help us out with the merch, you know, it helps the network grow in different ways and we really greatly appreciate it. But obviously, we're all excited about the subscribers we have here in the comments. So uh, that's it for me. We're ready to go, Victor. It's been a long couple of days because of the draft. Uh, we're a little late getting this video out, but hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, but on that note, ya nos vamos. Pues, vámonos.